my hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show? Dork Addendum 5. It's an add-on to the regular show, my friends. You know the deal. Uh, hey, it's Jackie Cation with uh, my own dorkdoms and some letters from the people. I'm uh, I'm still back. We're still back in time to the pre to the pre pre recorded. So this is from, although maybe not. I'm in tw- I'm in 2012. That's where I'm at. I don't think I have any from the Blog Talk Radio days. I think I must have because it was all live then, and so there was just live commentary in the chat room. So we are pre recorded 260 odd episodes in. And um, let's do this. These, by the way, I do the audio on these. So Patrick Brady, not involved, but he has taught me well. So hopefully they are listenable. It's just a 15-minute me talking, t- t- telling you what uh, what letters I got and then telling you what dorky thing I'm doing this week. Because uh, people wanted to know more about me. And when I say people, I mean seven of you. Good for you. Good for you for listening. Okay, so uh, full episodes, of course, dorkforest.com and itunes.com. I will eventually get to the iTunes comments, but right now we're in August 3rd, 2012. Message from the website. Chris in Salt Lake City writes, I just finished reading Meryl Marco's essay on her mother. It's amazing the impact a mother's words, actions, and feelings leave on our hearts and minds. Sometimes good, sometimes not so much. You'll hear her words in your head forever. I am sure you are living in a whirlwind of emotions right now. Hang tough, focus on the good stuff, cherish those you have on your side while you grieve and know she loved you in her own weird motherly way. Hugs from a stranger. Oh, this was right after my stepmother passed away. She passed away about two and a half years ago now, a little over two years ago. And, uh... That is very sweet, Chris. I'm uh, slightly choked up because I don't re I don't read these before I read these. So there you go. Okay, uh, next up, also August, August fourth, two thousand twelve. This one is from Stace, a man. It's Stace, the guy with the fedora that made you your last two Carlsbad, California gigs that you may not vaguely remember. LOL. I do remember you actually. You said sadly that the Saturday date. Uh, on the wait, this might be actually just be a work email. That's interesting that I would just read this. Hope you. Uh, I'm gonna just skip ahead. <laughs> I don't know why this is in this folder. That's interesting. Hope you and Andy are doing well. Glad your schedule's picking up a bit. Thoroughly enjoy the podcast. Have a good week. That see, it ended up being about the podcast. Well, thank you, Stace. Uh, all right. How about David Wheeler? David Wheeler. Um, hmm. This is also from 8 4 of 2012. It seems to be an answer. David Wheeler. Interesting. Uh, okay. Weird about your dad. I'm sure you've found out many times before that people get most prickly about things they're most insecure about. These, well, welcome to 2012 when my dad was clearly saying some weird things. Shocked. Uh, oh, it must have been when he said that he was going to die too. Oh, no. Nope. Why don't I read the why don't I read the email instead of driving us all mad? Hi Jackie, weird about your dad. I'm sure you've found out many times before that people get most prickly about the things they're most insecure about. Maybe someone teased him about clothes when he was younger and couldn't do anything about it. Just a guess from the cheap seats here. I'm getting ready to be featured in my son's stand up material when he finally gets the nerve to go up and open mic night at Comedy Off Broadway here in Lexington, Kentucky. He's going to have to do family jokes because that's all he knows. Oh, well, if it launches him, I'll stand by it. Uh, there we go. The Street Preacher video was painfully funny. The Street Preacher video, by the way, was a Pat Patrick Brady shot video where I played a street preacher uh, who said mean things. Street Preacher video was uh, painfully funny. Nice little signature move at the end, too. Good work. You're a talented actress. Oh, that's very nice of you to say, David Wheeler. Good luck in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Austin, and Seattle. I know you'll be killer. Maria did a show last Wednesday night at Zany's in Nashville, which was 220 miles from here, a mere four-hour drive, and I trade every way in the world to get off my job and take my son to see her, but it didn't work. I'm going to keep pestering comedy off Broadway to hire you two in tandem, and I promise a Greyhound bus full of heavy drinkers when you two arrive. Or play Nashville on a weekend and I can get there. Or Louisville, Cincinnati, Knoxville. I'm flexible. Looking forward to it. Well, thank you. See, this says it came from David Wheeler, but he signed it Jim Trammell. 
Lexington, Kentucky. Old man of the Dork Forest, 59 today. Well, hopefully you are 61 in August of this year. All right, for the suggestion box. I got one uh, August, also in August of 2012 from the suggestion box from Redford Christie. I would love it if you would put a picture in the notes of the people you are interviewing for the TDF podcasts. Just a quick snapshot, so... I would have a face to go with the name. I'm that kind of people. Need a visual. I Google them, but can't always find them. Like Patrick Brady. I hear his name every time. I'm not smart enough to find him on the web. <laughs> Thanks, Chris in Salt Lake City. Ah, that's Chris in Salt Lake City. Redford Christie. Well, weirdly enough, I think it was in 2012 that I started doing the Dork Forest teasers, which have a picture of the guest. And then a tiny, like a, it's a slug image. It just says Dork Forest. It has a picture of the guest and then a tiny picture of their name. And then it's just a one to four minute clip of the show. So I think that it was inspired by Redford Christie. And I thank you for it. What does Carrie Perez have to say from August of 2012? Hi, I saw you at Hypno Comics for Fanboy Comics Night this month. I even talked to you outside about romance novels. Danielle Steele is clearly Carrie Perez's poison. Just wanted to say again that you're awesome and inspirational to any woman. Thanks for making life sound as funny as it seems. That is a great line, Carrie, because uh, life is as funny as it seems. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, Eduardo Baraf, he is a good guy. Uh, he's been on the show. I got one of those. I got a chicken recipe from Alicia Albaron. Hello, Alicia Albaron, August 13th, 2012. Chicken adobo. I love your podcast and chicken. Here's my mom's Filipino chicken adobo recipe if you want to try it out. It's literally my favorite food. One chicken, cut up into sections. Two inches of fresh ginger root, sliced thin. Four cloves of garlic, minced. Two bay leaves. One teaspoon of pickling spice. Huh, I don't think I tried this. One cinnamon stick or a quarter teaspoon ground cinnamon. Three tablespoons of white vinegar. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. One cube of chicken bouillon. One fourth teaspoon of paprika. Combine all the ingredients in a medium-sized pot. Cover and marinate in the refrigerator for at least an hour up to overnight. On the stovetop, stir gently over medium heat until the sides turn white. Hmm. Add a cup of water. Reduce heat to low. Let simmer for 35 to 40 minutes, stirring occasionally. Add salt to taste. Serve over rice. Hope you like it. Alicia A. Well... Uh, I am reminded of that chicken recipe. I do love Filipino chicken. It's really good. Okay. Um, here's something from the website. Michael Callahan, regular, regular correspondent on the Ranger page at, on, uh, on, the, on Facebook. Michael Callahan, what'd you write to me, Michael, in August of 2012? Hello, Jackie. We've talked some before at your Dork Forest Live show about a year ago. I am friends with a schoolmate, I believe, of yours also. I live in Chicago and was unable to see your latest show there. Anyway, as to why I'm writing, I'm sure you probably already know, but they just opened a new Zanies in Rosemont. Rosemont, Illinois. Rosemont is right before... Oh, you know what? This is a I should do Rosemont uh, email. You were right, Michael Callahan, and I did do Rosemont, and you came to it, and you brought your wife. So there you go. That worked out for us <laughs> two years later. August 19th, also from the website. Jack Hafner writes, Great name, great stuff, very funny. I was wondering how I could get a signed photo. Thanks, Je Jack Hafner in Hartford City, Indiana. You can't. You can't get a signed uh, photo, Jack Hafner, because uh, nobody makes headshots anymore. Everyone just has digital images, and you can't get a headshot. So I, I hope I responded to that two years ago. I might have had an old headshot. I wonder if I sent you one of those. August 20th, Tyrone, Maine. Tyrone? Nope, Tyson. Tyson, Maine. Both good names. But Tyson, Maine actually rolls a little better. Good, good AM, he writes. We've talked before. You've been nice enough to respond to me. I am the one who saw you with Maria Bamford and then have seen you and Maria. I just saw her live CD taping in Portland ever since in Portland at Helium and Kirkland at Laughs. You even signed your CD that I bought from you. I'm writing to let you know that I was able to get a ticket for your 10 p.m. show on Friday at Laughs in Kirkland. This is turning turning into a long story. That's okay. You're just giving me some, some context, Tyson. I appreciate it. The notable thing, I was hoping that you'd be playing a show on Thursday since I already have a ticket to different shows on the Friday, Saturday. Anyway, I got a ticket to your late show on Friday. Okay. Maybe, maybe it would have been kinder not to read this, Tyson. But anyway, thanks for coming to town again, being worth the rush of two shows in one night. I look forward to laughing and hope that I get time there to get a good seat. Thanks again. I remember you saying you like to read, so hopefully you made it to the end of this. <laughs> that uh, made that, that, made that uh, email 
Uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Tyson. How about this? 82312. Another one from Quiet Mike. Quiet Mike Meisner. How's it going? Jackie. Man, that was a fun episode. It goes to the es- essence of great comedy. Family. You can't write better stuff than what your family gives to you for free. Awesome. Uh, Quiet Mike, still glowing from you mentioning my moniker on a podcast. Well, here it is again, Mike Meisner. Let's live it up. Uh, There you go. How about Kev Ham? What did Kev Ham have to say? I think this is in response to something. Uh, Oh, it's Kev Ham asking me to do his podcast. Well, there you go. That's exciting. And he lives in Montana. We could do a podcast via Skype. I wonder. I wonder what the name of his podcast. Ah. Well, there you go. I, Kev. Hopefully, I did your podcast. I think I did. You sound super familiar. Request for a Dork Forest patch that came uh, from the lovely and talented John Smith which I sent that to him. I don't know why it's in this folder, but there it is. Angie Green writes to me about the Mexican hat dance. I'm the person on Facebook who offered to take you to dinner while you're at the Comedy Attic in Bloomington. My boyfriend and I are going to the Saturday early show. You know what, Angie Green? We went to dinner. We went for pizza, if I remember correctly, at the Comedy when I did Bloomington a couple of years ago. There, we're actually both dorks about various things. He kind of knows a little bit of everything. I can quote movies, TV, and musicals like it's a job. So I do think you'd have fun with us. Here's a link to some of the restaurants in Bloomington if you wanted to pick something that sounds good. Oh, we went to the pizza place, the fan, the, the the famous pizza place in Bloomington, local uh, Mothers, I think it's called. Either way, we're really looking forward to seeing you again. We saw you last time with Maria, and you killed it. Cheers, Angie. Well, thank you, Angie. Ooh, Ken Baker. What? Uh, where am I at? I wonder. Oh, I'm already at 12 minutes. I'll read Ken Baker's next time. We're and it's the beginning of uh, we're, we're we're we've arrived to September 2012, so it's coming together. And uh, yeah, oops. And uh, so let's just tell you what I'm doing, uh, dorky wise, I guess, for a couple of minutes. Here we are, November 18th, I think it is, and I bought about four or five days ago all six. The first six Final Fantasy Legends are now available for iPad. Yeah, and I bought them. And uh, many hours are not being used to read or watch television or movies or read comic books or reread whatever crap I'm rereading right now, but to play Final Fantasy Legend. Which, by the way, I'm playing Final Fantasy 1 because I only played a Final Fantasy 2 version for Game Boy, the old gray brick. And that's what I used to do a bit about that. But 1 through 6, these are the NES versions. And so I've never even played this game. And it's awesome. The graphics are amazing. You get to pick. I have, uh, there's no mutants. There's no mutants available. I have two fighters and a white mage and a black mage because I didn't scroll down and find out I could have got a red mage or another, uh, another thing. So this first time playing Final Fantasy 1, I, I am wandering around, but first six, first six games, this should, this should cover me for years, years, I tell you, and uh, $70 for six, six games. So not that bad. I mean, like 11 bucks a piece or whatever, or 12, whatever the math would be. You get it, whatever the math would be on that. But they're uh, so far so good. It's really fun. So if you guys are looking for an iPhone, iPad game, the first six, uh, you can buy them separately. Or if you buy all six of them, they're $70. So you get a deal. And then you play for four years, I assume. That is my dorky day. That's all. It's a lot of con- There's a lot of dork for us coming these days. So this is dorkdom. I think let's wrap it up. Thanks for listening, you guys. I hope, uh, hope everybody's doing good out there. Take care. <laughs>